So today, our big goal is to look at scale change to see how scale change will affect sine, cosine, and tangent. So first off, we have to recollect what scale change theorem states. So remember that scale change talks about a function. So if you have a function like this, and you replace y with y over some number, and f of x and the x gets replaced with x over b, remember that the this right here and this right here talk about the stretches. So when you divide by 2 over here, dividing by 2 means stretch by a factor of 2. So in this case right here, the divide by 3 is a horizontal stretch so it gets pulled left and right so originally it's a parabola like this but now it gets pulled like this it opens up wider okay uh, vertical stretch by factor of three next this component right here is dealing with vertical but it's not a stretch because I'm not dividing so it's a compression. So it's a vertical compression. By two. In other words, we squash it down. We squash it down in half. We cut it in half. Not cut it in half. We push it down. So as we look here, uh, this, what I showed right here, is this is my parent function. This is just the vertical, excuse me, the horizontal stretch. So we see that things get, all you do is grab this and pull it outward. So it's uh, tripled outward. Now notice what's missing here is I didn't put the two in. So notice when I put the two in now, how it changes things. It pushes it down. Now in this situation, it feels like a compression down and a pulling out do almost the same thing. And that's true. There, it does have that feel. So uh, pushing down and pulling out have the same feel. Now the difference is when I pull out, I can pull out infinitely far to only get a straight line. So it looks like a flat line. Um, however, I can keep pressing it down so that it actually flips upside down. So if you remember that if you were to put a negative in the front there, it flips it upside down. So that's a vertical reflection. So um, the horizontal stretching will never make the uh, parabola flip over. But the compression down here will eventually make it uh, flip. So this times three right here is a horizontal compression. And that's by a factor of three. So if this is my original, it's going to get squashed inward by a factor of three. Or you could say I, I squash it by a third or, some, or a, a, a stretch by one third or a compression by uh, a factor of three. So there is a vertical stretch because of this. But next up is that this negative here means that I'm going to flip it upside down. Or you could say a uh, vertical um, reflection. So instead of opening upward like this one does, it's going to open downward like so. Thanks. Good. Uh, good. The three here, of course, tells me that my, uh, I just messed up over here. So instead of being a parabola, it, this is my parent function right here. It starts off like this. And then we're going to flip it. Uh, so we do have to flip it. So now here's a flip. So now this is the negative, what the negative does. So my apologies to that. Now we are going to compress horizontally. So it's going to squeeze together. So now it's going to be a little bit more tight like that. Now it's more tight like this. And then I'm going to pull up here and pull down there by a factor of four. So it actually gets stretched to look something like this probably. <coughs> Probably looks quite compressed and stretched. If this is the parent function, it gets squashed quite a bit to look like that. 
So we're going to look at sine waves particularly. So we've already talked about what period means, uh, but let's just uh, briefly describe what period is. So period is any from one corresponding point to another, from one corresponding point to another. So in this case, I'm going crest to crest. So this right here is my period. And that's corresponding point uh, from one corresponding point to another. And we don't have to choose the crest. We could have used the, the trough here from the uh, trough to the trough. You could have done the mid here to the, to the mid over on the other one. Notice this is the mid on the way down, not the mid on the way up. Um, so uh, the length of x from one point uh, to its cor uh, corresponding point. Uh, next, an amplitude. Amplitude is pretty much how big this is. So that's the y measure. But it's not exactly this. It's not the high to low. It's close. Whatever this is, however high the whole wave is, you cut it in half. So you're going to cut this in half. Um, so the amplitude is 1 half max minus min. And this is, this is why. Because if I were to uh, draw it, this does not represent an axis. It doesn't have to be the, the, the x-axis. All we're saying is that the amplitude is this right here, and notice that it's replicated underneath this um, dividing line here. So the amplitude is effectively just this here, or this here, or this here. Any of those represent amplitude. So we're going to talk about the scale change theorem and how it relates to sine, cosine, and tangent. So first off, Let's consider this equation, y equals 6 times the cosine of x over 3. And we're going to explain its relationship to the parent function. And we want to identify a period and amplitude. So just like we did at the very beginning, how does it stretch or how does it compress? We're going to do that same thing here. So notice that this one is a quick one to identify right here. Because dividing by the x dividing by 3, so I know I have a horizontal stretch. A horizontal stretch by a factor of 3. So again, if this is my cosine function like this, I know that I'm going to take the ends and I'm going to pull it out. So now it's going to look more like, more like that. So it's going to be stretched out significantly. Next, what does this 6 tell me? Well, it's not in the form that we're used to. Remember that if I were to divide by 6 and divide by 6, now it's more familiar. So over here now it tells me that it is a vertical stretch by factor of 6. Which means, now I'm going to take the red here, and I'm going to pull it up dramatically. Pull it up dramatically. So now it goes way up, and then way down. So that means the vertical stretch, this is going to affect my amplitude. This changes my amplitude. And this here is going to affect the period and also something called frequency. So let's walk through this step by step to see how things are affected here. Um, if this is my, the stretch is probably easier to start with. Um, remember the parent function, y equals the cosine of x. It has an amplitude of 1. Why? Because it simply goes up to 1 and then down to negative 1. Up to 1, down to negative 1, uh, and it oscillates in that way. So that means my amplitude here, my amplitude here is simply 6. Because all we've done is we've stretched this, this 1 by 6. Notice it's a positive number. 
even though it does also go into the negative, the actual size of it is an absolute value. And next, cosine of x has a period of 2 pi, right? Every, every 2 pi, every 360 degrees, it comes back on itself. So periodicity by 2 pi. So how does stretching this by a factor of 3 change that? Well, so what we do is we take the 2 pi and we stretch it by 3. So now we have 6 pi. In other words, it makes one period in 6 pi. So that's why it's stretched out so much because it takes this one will go around 3 times by the time that this one only goes around once. So as we look at the function here, notice that this one here is my cosine function, my parent function, and this is the function that I'm looking at. Notice that they both start on zero here uh, at, at high. So this one starts high of one, this starts high of six, and this one goes down to negative one, this one goes down to negative six. And this one goes once, twice, and three times by the time this guy does one. So this one is much faster, this one is much slower. Good, so just by way of, of checking, notice that I took out the horizontal stretch. So this six in the front, all it did was turn the volume up, right? This is a, a tone that's happening, and when you turn the volume up, beep, it just gets louder, beep. I just changed pitch, I shouldn't have. But uh, same, same pitch, but higher volume. Now, when we, squat, when we change, like we did in, in this case here, when we do change this one, um, x divided by 3, if we're talking tone, this actually drops the tone down. And then as you, as you make it uh, pull it in a little bit more tight right here, So working through this, again, our period, we just take however our uh, stretch or compression occurs, and we multiply that by the original period of 2 pi. And our amplitude is actually straightforward. It's just that in front. So this actually brings us to our uh, a theorem of the property of sine waves. Notice that the property of a sine wave will also be a property of a cosine wave, just shifted over 90 degrees. So, uh, simply put here, the graphs of the functions defined by y equals b times the sine of x over a and y equals b times the cosine of x over a, they both have an amplitude of b, so it's just that coefficient effectively, that's the vertical stretch. And of course, the key part here is that it is absolute value. And it has a period of... 2 pi times the absolute value of A. And again, A is kind of like the reciprocal. It's the number that's dividing. So we have to watch out, for example, if I saw cosine of 2x, I'm actually uh, going to be considering the period of 1 half for that. So how would you answer this question? Why must the amplitude be absolute value? And because amplitude is a distance, it has to be positive uh, distance. All right, so what we're going to do now is you're given a graph, and we're going to unpack that in order to find out what the function is. So in the same way, back in the old days when you had um, a linear equation that did this, you needed two things. You needed to know what M was and what B was, right? B is where you begin and M is how you move. So, oh, I begin right here, whatever this is, at three, and then I go up to right four or whatever. So uh, two fourths, and then we were able to reduce that, and then this one here, and then we can plug it in. Well, that's the same idea. We still need to know uh, certain things, but instead of M and B, like in linear situations, we need two things. Uh, we're going to use primarily this function right here. So we just need to know essentially the amplitude and period. We also need to know which one we're using, sine or cosine. So let's take a gander here. First off, it passes through the, it passes through this, so it has to be sine. Okay, so it has to be sine because it passes through the origin. 
Okay. So we know that my function is going to look something like this, where I have a, a B. Let's make sure I'm using the same. And a cosine, well, let me change that to just a regular B. And then uh, x over your a. So I need to know the amplitude, which is the easiest to find. And then I need to know the period, which goes under here. And I also have to consider options, because I have to consider pluses and minuses. So the amplitude, of course, we are going to look at the max and the min. And we only need to know the, uh, the max being 4 and the min being negative 4. And of course, we have to take half of that. Now, quickly, you can see, since the x-axis cuts the whole function in half, the whole graph in half, you can only consider the top half or the bottom. But um, if the whole graph was shifted up or down, we'd have to definitely consider this way. So in the end, we see that the amplitude is 4. So 4 times louder, if this were a tone, than the regular tone of the sine. Next, period. What's the period? Go ahead and talk with your neighbor real quick. How are we going to find the period and use two corresponding points? If we look at these two corresponding crests, we note that this one's at what looks like 315, and this one looks at 135. So 315 minus 135 is a buck 80. So 180 degrees, uh, period. Now that's that. Well, uh, so, the period has to be a ratio of the 360. Because the period is defined as 2 pi times a, I'm looking to see that ratio right there. So, my answer is every 180 is my period, um, or every 180, uh, it repeats itself on a cycle. But let's just make sure, if I say 360 degrees times A is equal to 180, because this is, what's the, what's the product uh, that I have to do to get this? So in the end, when I divide, A is equal to 1 half. All right, just to show, uh, remember though, that our, we're dealing with positives and negatives up here because of the fact of the absolute value. So because it's absolute value, the absolute value of being 4, we're considering it's either positive or negative 4. Same thing here with my A. It's also going to be positive or negative. So don't forget, don't forget those because of the absolute value. We have to attach the plus or minus. Wait, no, so, the amplitude so because of that, we have four options. These are my four options. Either y is equal to 4 times the sine of x over 1 half. Just to give you a heads up, when you do x over 1 half like this, the divide by, uh, dividing by a fraction is the same as saying 2x right there, multiplying by the reciprocal. Okay. So there's one option. In other words, I chose the positive and the positive. But I've got another option. It could be negative 4, the sine of 2x. And yet I have other options as well, because I have 4 times the sine of negative 2x. And then I have one more. y is equal to ne where both are negative. Could you do 0.5 um, sine and then divide x by 4 to get the same function? So now we just have to reason logically. Notice that my original function for sine passes through here, the origin, but it goes up only to 1 right here at the, at the 90, right? Somewhere over there. So it goes up there, then down here, then down here, something like that. Which means because it's a reflection, instead of going up, it goes down. That means I need to have one negative somewhere. So either it's a vertical reflection, that's what this negative in the front here means, or it's a horizontal reflection. Because it can be either one in this case, 
Why? Because uh, this guy here, it, it, it would either reflect to right there, to in between. Uh, so the original function, after I changed it to uh, multiply by four, would go here, like so. And then this guy now reflects over to there. So either it's reflecting, this one reflects down to here, or this one's reflecting over to there. So the answer is either one of these, but only one reflection. Only one reflection. Horiz vertically there or horizontally there. Now, of course, let's test it by looking at uh, Desmos. All right, so as we check this, notice that if I deselect the red one and then now select it, it's right on top of it perfectly. So it turns out that reflecting one of them, reflecting uh, horizontally or reflecting vertically, both give me the same in this context. Not all functions, but this one here. So that's why I chose either one of those two. All right, example four is your turn. Go ahead, attack, kill, destroy. The key thing, folks, is the small squiggly one. That's the original function. That's the cosine of x. So now the big one is the one that's being translated, or excuse me, um, uh, scaled. Now, uh, once we find the, we can find the amplitude just by seeing here's the max and here, here's a min, and so the difference there is six. Cut that in half, so our amplitude is three. So quickly we know that three has to be in front. We know it's gonna be a cosine function. And the question is, what is going to be underneath the, uh, the x here? Well, since um, the... Uh, since the uh, period here is 6 pi, we want to see how that relates to 2 pi because the original, the parent function is 2 pi. So 2 pi a equals 6 a uh, pi divide uh, by 2 pi, so a is 3. So I now know that I am stretching it out by 3. Now, of course, the question is which variation of this because these have to be, like we mentioned earlier, positive or negative. Well, since my original function is a cosine and it drops down, goes high-low, this one goes high-low also. So that means there's no reflection happening either vertically or horizontally. Uh, so with that in mind, we know that neither of these are going to be, uh, neither, we're not going to have a single one being negative. Um, so the other option is going to be negative 3 times the cosine of x over negative 3. That also Will work. So that concludes the first uh, two pages here. Tune in for the next one.